बसमिल सालार खान हेयर एंड कंटिन्यूंग द टॉपिक ऑफ पावर फैक्टर टू डे वी टॉक अबाउट सम पावर फैक्टर इम्प्रूवमेंट डिवाइस हाउ टू इम्प्रूव द पावर फैक्टर ऑफ द सिस्टम सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी टॉक जनरली अबाउट इट आई ऑलवेज टेल यू दैट वाइल मेकिंग द नेक्स्ट वीडियो द प्रीसीडिंग वीडियो आई ऑलवेज एज्यूम दैट यू हैव वॉचड द प्रीवियस वीडियोज सो इफ यू हैव एन आइडिया अबाउट द पावर फैक्टर or if you don't have the power factor idea you don't know what it is so the first two videos the first the introduction to power factor and the second a simpler examples to explain the kva and power factor the equipment rating so that two are the most basic ones so you have to watch that first right yes so in this video we talk about a power factor improvement a little bit we talk about what we talk about power factor improvement so if i tell you so uh, if uh, for a basic definition let's say we talked about the cos of phi right or the ratio of the actual power to the apparent power or whatever it was let's say the power factor for instance i am just writing it as a cos of phi cos of the angle between the voltage and the current so the thing is that the power factor is lagging usually is that the your most of the loads majority of the loads are inductive which takes what which takes the lagging current and hence that we say lagging kvars and hence the power factor is lagging right yes now to to improve the power factor we need the current to be lagging less from more lagging to a less lagging current so the less lagging current would be good would be comparatively at a higher power factor why is that because the theta the angle would reduce and if the angle reduces the cause of that angle would increase and higher the cause of the angle higher is the power factor and hence that is good for the system let's see what the book has written about it i will just uh, i talk about it this way is that for instance you've got a voltage supply v across a load across a load and that load is what that is an rl load for instance so if you have an inductive load connected across a supply v this is let's say voltage supply v a current i is flowing right so what do you have is the voltage reference is this one the voltage reference is this one and the current is lagging this voltage over here let's say let's say let's say let's say this is the voltage reference this is the current which is lagging this through an angle for instance phi 1 so this one is operating at a power factor that is equal to cos of phi 1 right now what do i do is i this is a lagging current right i want to introduce some leading current for power factor improvement i will have to introduce some leading current that neutralizes the lagging effect of this current partly or completely so what would i have is the power factor could be improved so for instance what do i do is i install a capacitor in series with the load i install a capacitor in series with the load so what happens is that now this current would be what this current would be ic that is flowing through the capacitor and what have they named it and the current that is flowing through the load is the same i and the current that is leaving the supply i name is as i dash so which means what that i dash which is the supply current is equal to the capacitor current i c plus the load current i the capacitor current would lead the voltage by 90 degrees so if the capacitor current lead the voltage this is i c which is leading the voltage by exactly 90 degrees have a look what is the resultant current i dash it is the phasor sum of the two if i draw this over here have a look this is my i c what does this come out to be the resultant is this one the resultant is this current this resultant is your i dash have a look have a look what has happened have a look what has happened is this is now at an angle of phi 2 so which means what that phi 2 is less than phi 1 so if phi 2 is less than phi 1 this means what from your mathematics the cos of phi 2 would be greater than cos of phi 1 which means 
that the power factor at this angle theta 2 which means the power factor at the current i dash is greater than the power factor this implies what that the power factor at which current at the current i dash this is greater than the power factor at the current i which means what that we have improved the power factor by what by the installation of a capacitor by the installation of a capacitor capacitor or any other leading current taking device the rating we will see in the next video how what amount of capacitance should we include so that this is balanced that we'll see in the next video for this video this is just a general talk about it so have a look we have improved the power factor now there are some important points to note there are some important points to note over here okay power factor is improved right now you can see that the current of the circuit I dash I dash is the circuit whole current right so you can see that after power factor correction I dash is less than I the circuit current after the power factor correction is less than the current before power factor correction and that we've already seen that the current taken by the circuit is inversely proportional to the power factor P is equal to V I cos of phi so I is equal to P upon V cos of phi yes so higher the power factor lower is the current taken right yes this is the first point the second point is that the active component or the watt full component is the same in before and after power factor correction what is that have a look i cos of phi the the the, the projection on the x axis have a look i cos of phi 1 is equal to what is equal to the after power factor correction is i dash cos of phi 2 so have a look the both the projections are the same which means the watt full component or the active component is the same in before and after correction this is phi 2 yes the lagging reactive component is reduced the lagging reactive component so have a look first it was this much now it is this much right have a look first it was this much this was the lagging reactive component that is i sine of phi 1 whereas now it has reduced to this much this is what this is i dash sine of phi 2 so have a look if you see what do you have it that the total i sine of phi 1 this is before after before power factor correction this is equal to the sum of i c and what i dash sine of phi 2 isn't it like this it is so which means that you can say that i dash sine of phi 2 you can find out from here is i dash sine of phi 2 this is equal to what i sine of phi 1 this is uh, to calculate the reactive one minus the capacitive current i c right yes now uh, from here you can say what if you multiply both sides by v if you multiply both sides by v so what would be the case uh, v i cos of phi 1 would be equal to v i dash cos of phi 2 this would imply what that the power in kilowatts remain unchanged the active power remains unchanged the active power power factor improvement has no effect on the what on the active power right yes similarly from here you can say what if you multiply this by a v as well if you multiply this by a v as well so this would be kvars 2 right this would be the net kvar after power factor correction if you multiply this by a v on both sides so what would you have this would be the net kvars 
after power factor correction so let's say i name it as 2 after power factor correction and this would be equal to what the kvr before power factor correction so i would say kvar 1 for the power factor correction and minus minus the kvar minus the kvr injected i would write over here why am i writing the term injected over here or these are the because these are the kvrs the leading kvr that are taken by the capacitor and the capacitor i have introduced over here which means that i have injected these kvrs into the system so i would be using the word injected over here fine yes from here you can see that p1 is equal to p2 which means that the active power before power factor correction is equal to the active power after power factor correction right yes so this is just just what just a general talk about it right now in the next video we will see how much rating of the capacitor we require how much kvars we require to 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 you know uh, compensate for the lagging current and to improve the power factor we will be given that you have to improve this much power factor so based on that we will do the calculations right yes now the equipment that we use the equipment that we use for what that we use for power factor correction so we'll just write it over here as well so the first one are static capacitors the first one are static capacitors now what is a static capacitor so just a capacitor a two plate capacitor right yes so what does that do is that would take a leading current that would take a leading current that is what that i've explained over here that will take a current ic that will lead the voltage by what that will lead the voltage by 90 degrees so this will do what this would compensate for the lagging current that is drawn by the inductive load and hence the overall current would be the sum of the two and the power factor would increase the power factor angle would decrease and the power factor would increase right yes so this is a passive device it has no running equipment right yes so this may be uh, for three phase it may be connected in delta or in star connection mostly in delta connection right yes Static capacitors are invariably used for power factor improvement in factories, right? Yes. Now it has got some advantages. It has got some disadvantages as well. The advantages are that they have low losses. They have low losses. This is the advantage. I will write them over here. They require little maintenance. Why they require little maintenance? Because they are just static devices. They don't have any rotating parts. No machinery is involved. So that is why they require very little maintenance. I hope the spelling is right. If not, let it go. <laughs> The other thing is they can be easily installed. Of course, they can be easily installed. They do not require a strong foundation right they do not require they are light and require no foundation for installment so they are easily installed and they can work under ordinary atmospheric conditions they can work under ordinary atmospheric conditions right so these are some advantages of using a static capacitor now the second there would be some disadvantages as well and what are that that they are they have a short service life they have a short service life and that is eight to ten years okay they have a short service life and why is that so because they are affected by transients they are highly affected by transients that occur due to what that occur due to switching of loads of course right yes second is they are easily damaged they are easily damaged and why are they damaged if the voltage exceeds the normal voltage value if they increase if the voltage level exceeds a particular value that is the normal rated value so they can they have a greater possibility of being damaged very easily right yes and the third is what they have written over here is once the capacitors are damaged their repair is uneconomical repair is uneconomical which means what that you have to completely remove it and you have to uh, uh, install a new one which means that they cannot be repaired for instance right it in this way repair is highly uneconomical so you have to just put a new one over here it cannot be replaced 
right so this one is for the static capacitor number two number two is for what number two you could say is a synchronous condenser number two is a synchronous condenser now what is a synchronous condenser so now if a synchronous motor a synchronous motor in an overexcited state takes what takes leading current synchronous motor when overexcited this takes what this takes leading current so which means that you can do it in this way you need leading current of course to compensate your lagging current so you can do it in any other way so the synchronous motor you have to operate it in the over excited state when this runs uh, 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 in the under excited states this takes lagging current which means this would act as a inductor right yes and similarly the synchronous condenser is what when the synchronous motor operating at no load when this is operating at what this is operating at no load so this is called what this is called a synchronous condenser so with the help of a synchronous condenser you can improve your power factor the idea is the same a synchronous motor takes leading current when over excited therefore behave as a capacitor an over excited synchronous motor running on no load is known as synchronous condenser and this and that and this and that now uh, this uh, current that it is taking let's say this is the voltage right this is the voltage so this leads the voltage this leads the voltage this is the current of the motor i m so this leads the voltage by an angle phi m now this phi m have a look i have not drawn it purely 90 degrees i'm taking about the, the lagging over here in the static capacitor i talked about 90 degrees because that was a pure capacitor over here it is not a pure capacitor so this phi m this would be generally less than 90 degrees why because of the losses because of the losses well if there are no losses phi m is 90 degrees if there are no losses in the motor if there are no losses in the motor if the motor is ideal that is there are no losses so this we call it the ideal motor whereas we have losses so the current would not lead the voltage exactly by 90 degrees the angle would be slightly less than 90 degrees right yes so uh, uh, yes the other the other thing is the same you know this would just cancel out the effect and the power factor would increase the power factor angle would decrease and the power factor would increase right yes now what do you have is uh, where are the used so synchronous condensers are generally used at major bulk supply substations where are they generally used is at major bulk supply substations they are generally used right whereas whereas the static capacitors were generally used uh, where at factories now again these have also got their advantages their disadvantages now the advantages first so by varying the field excitation the magnitude of the current drawn by the motor can be changed this helps in achieving stepless control of power factor so by varying the field excitation which means that the over excitation can be controlled this means what that the over excitation you are operating it in the over excited mode but you can also control this the over excitation can be controlled and how is that controlled by varying the field excitation through the field windings the rest is machines <laughs> So you know that now over here we cannot go into greater detail of that but the thing is that how do you do it by by varying the field excitation by the field current right so by this you can control your over excitation and you can control the leading current taken by the machine right yes this helps in achieving stepless control of power factor stepless is what now in the capacitor you have a stepped control and how is that so that depends on the rating on the rating of the capacitor for instance you have a 50 you have a 50 uh, kvr capacitor available in the market 
so what can you do you can either install a 50 capacitor or you can install two to get 100 kvrs or you could install three to get 150 kvrs which means you can install a multiple of 50 why because the available is 50 right yes you cannot go for 60 to 75 right yes but over here by varying the field current according to your wish how whatever you need it to be according to your needs you can have the what the current that you need and according to that you can have the kvrs that you require this is what is called the step less control now that was the 50 100 multiples of 50 that was stepped control right yes the motor, uh, motor windings have high thermal stability to short circuit currents. So they have what? They have got a thermal stability. And the thermal stability to short circuit currents. Right? Yes. The third is what? The faults can be removed easily. Faults can be removed easily. So I would just write faults removed. You need to you need to read out the book for yourself. Disadvantages. Disadvantages. There are considerable losses in the motor. Of course, you've got windings. You've got you've got losses. Of course, you've got losses. Maintenance cost is high. Maintenance cost is high. Why? You've got a rotating part, part. You have got a machinery involved. So you've got you have to have maintenance. Plus, you would also have wear and tear. Why? Because you are moving parts, rotating parts. Of course, wear and tear would occur. Noise. Of course, it produces noise. Noise could be a disturbing factor as well over here. Except in sizes above 500 kVA, the cost is greater than that of the static capacitors. So, the cost is greater. Cost is greater. So this is not economical, but when you go above 500 kVA, then this is good. So I would write it over here at above 500 kVA, it is good. Whereas over here the cost is high when the when 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 you when you are operating at voltages below uh, when size is below 500 kVA right yes another disadvantage as a synchronous motor has no self-starting torque auxiliary equipment is required a synchronous motor has no self-starting torque so which means what that you require an auxiliary an extra equipment to to produce that starting torque for the synchronous motor so this is another disadvantage for that the reactive power taken by synchronous motor depends on two factors DC field excitation and mechanical load delivered. Maximum power leading power is taken by synchronous motor with the maximum excitation and zero load. So you know this from your machines, right? Yes, let me have a, a sip of water and I'll just continue with the third. The third is what? The third is phase advancers. Now, I believe I made this video a little longer, but anyways, phase advancers are the third. What does this say? What does this say? Let's read it out from the book. Phase advancers are used to improve the power factor of induction motors. They are used to improve the power factor of induction motors. The low power factor of induction motor is due to the fact that its stator windings draw exciting current which lags behind the voltage by the 90 degrees. So basically the induction motor has what? It has got the stator windings. The stator windings draw the what? They draw the exciting current. And this is the exciting current that is the lagging current that lags the voltage by the voltage by 90 degrees or maybe less than 90 degrees whatever it is but 90 degrees ideally right so lagging current inductive component right but so what do you have is if if the exciting impaired turns which means if the exciting windings are provided by an additional supply if the exciting turn, turns can be provided from another AC source then the stator winding will be relieved of the exciting current and the power factor can be improved so what do you do is if 
in place of the stator winding you take the exciting current from another from an outside you could say ac source so what do you do is that the stator winding would also be relieved of the what of providing the exciting current and the power factor would also be improved why because it would not draw that lagging current right yes this job is accomplished by a phase advancer and this phase advancer is what this is just a simple ac exciter to provide that exciting current to the wind to the induction motor the phase advancer is mounted on the same shaft as the main rotor and is connected to the rotor of the circuit it provides exciting ampere turns to the rotor circuit at flip frequency so you know what is this at slip frequency now i will not go i will not talk about it you know it from your machines at slip frequency by providing more ampere turns than required the induction motor can be made to operate on leading power factor light and synchronous motor so if you provide more ampere turns more ampere turns so ampere turns ni you use for this right so more ampere turns then required this implies what the induction motor takes leading current and would operate as that of what as that of a synchronous motor so which means the power factor would be improved phase advancers have two principal advantages firstly as the exciting ampere turns are supplied at slip frequency therefore lagging kvrs drawn by the motor are reduced you are providing this at the slip frequency so the lagging kvrs by the motor are reduced by the motor are reduced the lagging kvrs drawn by the motor are reduced the ac exciter will draw lagging kvrs it is also an ac exciter but it will also draw lagging kvrs but the lagging kvrs of the motor have been reduced right yes secondly phase and ones can be con 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 conventionally used where the use of synchronous motor is unadmissible however the major disadvantage of the phase advancer is that they are not economical for motors below 200 horsepower so the advantage i would write over here is what was that slip frequency so the lagging kvrs by induction motor are reduced although the ac exciter would draw some lagging kvrs right yes and secondly is what uh, that they can be used in areas where you cannot use a synchronous condenser of course and the disadvantage is what the disadvantage is that phase advantages are not economical for motors below 200 horsepower not economical for motors below 200 horse powers right yes so i believe i've made this video longer i will finish it over here what do we talked about over here in the phase advances you have an induction motor so you have stator and rotor they are windings their windings they are made of coils again so which means they are inductive which means they would have to draw lagging current by 90 degrees so which means that they would be a lagging power factor and a lower power factor right yes so what you do over here is that you don't take the exciting from the its own stator windings rather put an additional source to provide you the 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 the, the, the what the exciting externally right yes the outside equipment will definitely have low power factor of course i told you the xc exciter will have a low power factor but the power factor of the induction motor has been eventually increased right yes so i believe i believe that should be it i believe that should be it. the main idea the main idea of the power factor improvement is what to provide a leading current one way or the other through capacitor through synchronous condenser through phase advancer whatever may be you provide it a leading current that compensates that neutralizes 
partly or completely the lagging current of the load and hence the angle of the power factor the angle between the voltage and the current reduces hence cause of that angle increases and implies what that the power factor has increased we've also got other methods like static war compensators, thyristor controlled reactors, voltage source converters, straight comps, thyristor switch compensators or what and in which the thyristor firing angle does the work. So we don't study it over here. Just let it go. The book has not mentioned it. I will finish this video over here. I will see you in the next video where we find out the rating of the equipment required. Till then take care of yourselves, everyone around you. Goodbye.